Red 2 standing by, all 4 lit and in the green. Welcome to Pokemon Heart Gold version. Now I wasn't entirely satisfied with my gold LP, I was just beginning. And I had a lot of technical problems along the way. But I have the upgraded version on a DS emulator. I have played the actual DS copy so many times and I absolutely adore the game. It's a magnificent upgrade, full of life and character, and I'm here to show you the best, excuse me, the best that Johto has to offer. I consider this game, along with Pokemon Platinum and Black and White, Soul Silver's also counted in there, don't you worry about that, but basically that trio to me is where Pokemon really hit its peak and was showing off the best it could be. So let's get into our grand adventure. We have some of the preliminary stuff to go through. I'll keep these episodes about 25 minutes or so, so we can get a lot out of things. But we've got our little introduction, we're waking up rather late, and talking to Professor Oak. I'm not going to do the really silly voice, I'll give him a little bit more dignity this time around. Sorry to keep you waiting. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. My name is Professor Oak, but everyone calls me the Pokemon Professor. Before we go any further, I'd like to tell you a few things you should know about this world. This world is widely inhabited by creatures known as Pokemon. We humans live alongside Pokemon as friends. At times we play together and at other times we work together. Some people use their Pokemon to battle and develop closer bonds with them. Now, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Are you a boy? Or are you a girl? Won't you please tell me? So you're a boy then. I will be choosing the male character for this one, but since there's usually cosmetic differences, when I get around to the Emerald Randomizer, which I was going to do, but I needed this for sort of spiritual therapy as such, I might play as the female character just because it's only really a cosmetic difference. I will be using my actual name. Or at least the shortened version thereof. Your name is Tom? That it is. Tom, are you ready? Your very own tale of grand adventure is about to unfold. Fun experiences. Difficult experiences. There's so much waiting for you. Dreams. Adventure. Let's go to the world of Pokemon. I'll see you later. And here we are in New Bark Town. A lot of the assets are reused from the Sinnoh games. We've got a Nintendo Wii, which was very popular at the time and one of the best selling systems around. We can head downstairs. There is something I'll have to pop back upstairs for. Hi Tom, you're finally awake. Your friend Lyra was just here. She was playing hide and seek with her Maril. Oh, I almost forgot. Our acquaintance, Professor Elm, was looking for you. He said he had a favour to ask of you. You know where the lab is, right? It's right next door to us. Which means if I miss it, I'm probably blind. Or just have no sense of direction, which is actually kind of the case in real life. By the way, do you have everything you need to go out? Here, use this bag to carry things. This is your trainer card. Here you can save a record of your progress. These are also rather helpful. Just try touching the buttons and you'll know what to do in no time. So I don't have a touch screen because I'm playing on an emulator. So we open up our menu and let's make sure the text speed is fast and set the menu to the brickwork I like so much. If we quickly pop back upstairs, went the wrong way, we can go to our PC and check our mailbox because mail was still a thing back then. At least hold items, anyway. So there we have a little letter from Lyra. Adventure, excited. I love Pokemon. Good to know you do. So we don't get to battle Lyra, but we will see her and her Maril hanging around a fair bit. Take a look at our rather lovely place. Been refurbished a little bit and step outside into beautiful new Bark Town where we get run into by the aforementioned Maril. Lyra's coming from the upstairs area of the lab. 
like Brendan and May in the previous games, the theme will differ depending on who your friend is. There's a slightly, well, more bold one if your friend is Ethan, who I'm playing as. If we listen, we've got great little touches, like that windmill going. You can hear the footsteps as well. So this is Lyra's house. If we pop in here, we can talk to her dad and we'll be able to talk to her. Hi, Tom. Lyra is upstairs. She's playing games with her Pokemon as usual. You didn't bring your... Pokemon? Oh, I should have known. You don't have your own Pokemon yet. Oh, well, I hope I didn't hurt your feelings, Tom. So if we quickly pop upstairs... Ugh. Unfortunately, the controller I've got is a little dodgy. But we make do. Tom, Professor Al was looking for you. Did you go to his lab? I cannot do female voices at all, so I apologize in advance. So we've already got more characterful houses. We've got pe random people we can talk to in the town. Yo, Tom. I hear Professor Elm discovered some new Pokemon. We don't have the guy who wanders around talking about technology. That's a little bit sad. But if we talk to this lady, we can actually learn, at least I believe we could in the original games because I didn't check it out, that Pikachu is an evolved Pokemon. This fact was first discovered by Professor Elm. I was amazed by Professor Elm's findings. He's so famous for his research on Pokemon evolution. Ah, <sighs> I wish I could be a researcher like him. And now we can head to the lab's upstairs section. This lady will just tell us that she likes our bag. If we head around here, we have a familiar red-haired kid who will actually be getting a proper name rather than just three question marks. So this is the famous Elm Pokemon lab. What are you staring at? So our little upstairs section here is just a residential area. Hi, Tom. Oh, sh ah! Uh, let's censor that out. I wasn't paying attention and thought that was a kid. Hi, Tom. My husband's always so busy. I hope he's okay. When he's caught up in his Pokemon research, he even forgets to eat. Interestingly enough, it was said that Adam Savage of Mythbusters did the same thing. When I grow up, I'm gonna help my dad! I'm gonna be a great Pokemon professor! I'm really, really so- we're off to a flying stop. I wasn't paying attention. And I mistook Professor Elm's wife for a last design or something like that. You idiot! We're off to a flying stop! I'll have to censor out the fact I accidentally cursed as well. So if we head up here, we can talk to the professor. Hi Tom! I've been waiting for you! Do you know anything about my research? As you know, Pokemon are carried in Pokeballs these days. But before the Pokeball was invented, people used to walk with Pokemon. Just like your friend Lyra does. Pokeballs are great because you can carry many Pokemon. But walking with Pokemon must have some advantages. Apart from keeping fit. It could have something to do with how Pokemon grow or evolve. So I'm going to give you a Pokemon. Can you walk beside this Pokemon, outside of its Pokeball, to see if this brings any special feelings or bonds between Pokemon and people? The device over there has some Pokemon you could choose from. Oh hey, I got an email. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. Hey listen, I have this acquaintance that people call Mr. Pokemon. He keeps finding weird things and raving about his discoveries. Anyway, I just got an email from him saying that this time it's real. It's probably another Pokemon egg, but we're still so busy with our Pokemon research. Wait, I know! You can go in our place, right? Can we count on you? You can choose one of the Pokemon over there. Great, so I get to be fobbed off with a crazy conspiracy theorist. Fantastic. Wonderful start. So touch a Pokeball to see what Pokemon is inside. So we have Chikorita. We have Totodile. We have Cyndaquil. Now I was pretty happy with my team even though the trade evolutions glitched out. Last time I had Torture, but this time I'm going with Chikorita. Even though Totodile is one of my favourite Pokemon, 
it kind of makes the game a little easy. Not to mention I don't think your rival actually goes that well with a Chikorita. But, even though a lot of people pick on Chikorita as being statistically the worst starter of the lot, I've never had any problems with it. I've always found it particularly reliable, and one of my friends, during the Generation 3 era, he could make Meganium impossible to take down. It would just shrug off everything and bounce back. He's always been very good with completely unorthodox Pokemon. Like Girafarig, for example. I might consider using Girafarig this time around. I've got some Pokemon planned out. I'm mostly making it up as I go along, but I will be trying to use some Johto Pokemon. So, you like Chikorita, the grass-type Pokemon. Here is our companion, we have Chikorita. We will give a good nickname to our Chikorita. Oh hello, we actually got a female one, not too bad. So, let's see. Well I've been playing Fire Emblem Heroes a lot and a name just came to mind. I'm going to call it Peony. There we go! And Chikorita is toddling along cutely behind us. How do you like walking with your Pokémon? It's not bad, is it? You can take it all the way to Mr. Pokémon's house, but don't leave it there. If your Pokémon gets hurt, you should heal it with this machine. It's so easy to use, just check the PC on my desk. Mr. Pokémon goes everywhere and finds rarities. His house is past Cherry Grove City. Go north a little past Cherry Grove. I'm counting on you, Tom. And as we head out, his assistant comes over to chat. Tom, I want you to have these to help you with your task. Well, a few potions to help us along the way isn't too bad. Saves us a bit of pocket money. Pokemon are weak in the beginning. Don't hesitate to use a potion if you think yours is in danger. So let's go and talk to Mum as well. But first we'll talk to Lyra. Tom! So you picked a Chikorita? It's a cute Pokemon you have. Yes it is and I will not hear any different. When you walk with it, it'll become more friendly. You should turn around and talk to it sometimes too. Oh that's right, why don't you show it to your mom? Already had it planned. See ya! Maril is trying to get to know Chikorita, so we've got a very firm friend. Let's see what Chikorita has to say. Peony doesn't seem used to its own name yet. That's very understandable. But let's check out its stats. If I can remember, I've got to press the X button. It's right there on the screen when I'm recording, you numpty. So, solid starting HP. We don't have a held item. We had a berry in the previous games. And we have a bashful nature, which does not raise or lower any stats. So that's not too bad. It's going to be a bit on the slow side, but hey. I'm using what I want to and I'll be more than happy to take my friends along. I mean, I had a fantastic time using Farret last time. Farret's not exactly the greatest Pokemon, but I love it and... I'm not prone to gushing over cute things, but I will gush over my shiny Farret because it is absolutely adorable. And our little buddy Chikorita is going to be a good friend. So let's go and show Mum our brand new companion. Oh, Tom, that's a cute Pokemon you have. Professor Elm must have given it to you. Oh, Professor Elm has a task for you, you say? What kind of task? I see. Sounds a little difficult. But when someone makes that kind of request of you, it must be important. Oh, that's right, I completely forgot. Your Poker Gear came back from the repair shop. Here you go. And there we are. The Pokemon Gear, or Poker Gear as it's often called, is what every trainer should have. Guess what? You can use the Poker Gear to make a phone call too. Do you remember how? You'll get a tutorial either way. Just power on the Poker Gear and touch the telephone button, okay? The names of the people you can call are automatically registered. Just select one to give him or her a call. Oh, I can't believe it's so easy to make a phone call. Well, it shouldn't really be that complicated in all honesty. 
We don't want a lot of trouble. Anyway, our poker gear. Much fancier. We already have Mum's number registered in it. We have blue as our default colour scheme. I believe female trainer has red as the default colour scheme. So if we switch to our op... Oh, it's pink. So we have that design. A Team Rocket themed one, which admittedly is pretty cool. What... I, wait, why do they even have a Team Rocket themed one? Is Team Rocket just sort of a joke or something like that? So there's a beautiful Shoji themed one. This I presume looks like a League Championship one. That would be a great advertisement for the Pokemon League because you've got those eight stars and everything. And then you've got that one, but I like the Shoji. So we won't be able to call anyone just yet, but we can actually store every single phone number. This does mean, as a bit of a problem, we do have to put up with Youngster Joey calling us about his freaking Rattata. So, let's talk to Lyra's father, see if he says anything different. Hi Tom, Lyra is upstairs. She's playing games with her Pokemon as usual. So, nothing changes there, but... Should go and see what uh, Lyra says. Just to be on the safe side. Because I'm sort of refreshing my memory a little bit along the way too. My Marrow is super cute. But your Chikorita looks pretty good too, Tom. I'm glad you think so. Alright, Peony, let's get going on our adventure. I believe we've got the potions in exchange for the fact we don't have the Orin Berry. How many did we get, anyway? Will I ever remember? Press the X button. It's on the screen. Aye, ah, rightio. Five potions. We can... F now, our bag has... That's our, pretty much our standard items pocket. Held items will generally go in there. This is our medicine pocket. Pokeballs. TMs and HMs, berries, mail, battle items, which are things like the X attack, and key items. With an admittedly rather nice rainbow palette too. So let's head out on our brand new adventure. Assuming I don't walk into a house. Wait one second! I almost completely forgot about this. Here, I'll give you my number. I'll call you if anything comes up. Well, with that done, let's get out onto Route 29 and the music has changed a bit, obviously. First step into the grass. Why would it be anything different? Alrighty, Peony. Let's hit it with a tackle. Now, it's worth noting that yes, the game engine is a bit on the slow side. It's kind of a problem, but it could be worse. I admit that Game Freak is not always the greatest at getting their programming right, but it's better than it was in Diamond and Pearl. Diamond and Pearl and Platinum are like completely different games. The saving is still a bit long and fiddly. But we'll trot along with Peony by our side, get her up to a decent level. There is a kid here. Hey, how are your Pokemon? If they're weak and not ready for battle, keep out of the tall grass. So there's a bush we can cut, we still have to deal with HMs along the way. Now apologies if I do start walking the wrong way. So if we head up here, I believe there is an item we can grab. And another wild Pokemon, what's it going to be? Another Pidgey. During the day you will find Sentret here as well as Pidgey. You will find Rattata at night. Rattata may appear a bit during the day, but it's a bit rarer. Oh, critical hit. Nice work, Peony. Now, this is still the days 
of Tackle having 95 accuracy, so don't be surprised if it misses a bit. So there we are, another potion. You'll find that there normally. And by normally I mean in the original games. But we already have a lot more character in the general design of everything. More Pidgeys! Level 4, well let's take it on. I probably will just show all the encounters and things like that because it keeps the flow of conversation going a little bit better. And I can tell you about all the things I appreciate, like we already... Oh, critical hit. Might as well use that Pokemon we found, so we've got a revised bag menu. Like, there's already been a bit more character added in just the battle screens. We still have Pokemon names in all caps, but you will actually see different types of terrain and things like that. Because that was an addition from Generation 3 onwards since it helped with Secret Power. Nature Power is also two critical hits in a row, good thing... No, not, not in a row. Alright, we won the speed tie. And we've leveled up. So there we are, we will actually get to see how much our stats improve by. And Peony knows Razor Leaf now, which won't help us that much against Pidgeys, but that's a very strong attack to have in the early game. I wanted to take a break, so I saved to record my progress. I generally won't be doing that. We can still head up here to Route 46, the foothills thereof. You can't climb ledges, but you can jump down from them to take a shortcut. Different kinds of Pokemon appear past here. If you want to catch them all, you have to look everywhere. Ah, the days when catching them all actually was a realistic dream. So we won't head up there just yet until I'm ready to catch things. Let's maneuver our way very carefully through here to this tree. Now berries have been replaced. You can find berries, but they do not grow on trees. Apricorns have replaced them. We do not have anywhere to put that. I'm waiting for Pokemon that appear only at night. So, there is an item down here, I believe. Or is it... Or am I thinking of... Uh, I always get confused between this and Route 102, and there's another blasted Pidgey. Still, we should be able to beat it with Razor Leaf. It's marginally stronger than Tackle. Once same type attack bonus is factored in. But we also have a higher crit ratio with Razor Leaf. It's nowhere near as broken as it was in Generation 1. So, Chikorita is going to have a bit of a problem in the early game unless it runs into normal type Pokemon because Pidgeys and Bug types resist Razor Leaf. There isn't anything down there. It is. Do you see those ledges? It's scary to jump off them. But you can go to Newton Bark Town without walking through tall grass. So, let's get to Cherry Grove City, where there is an old man standing around. You're a rookie trainer, aren't you? I can tell. That's okay, everyone is a rookie at some point. If you'd like, I can teach you a few things. Okay, then follow me. Now this tutorial is now mandatory. He'll sprint off. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot that you weren't wearing the running shoes. I'll try to go as slow as possible, so try keeping up. That horrible feeling when you're getting outrun by an old man. Some of them were incredibly fit though, you just had to look at Tommy Hafey, the Richmond legend from Australian football. He was as fit as a Mally Bull. Didn't matter how old he got, he was tough. 
This is a Pokemon Center. They heal your Pokemon in no time at all. You'll be relying on them a lot, so you'd better learn about them. This is a Pokemon Mart. They sell Pokeballs for catching wild Pokemon and other useful items. I don't think we can buy Pokeballs just yet. Route 30 is out this way. Trainers will be battling their Pokemon there. If you go a little farther, you'll see Mr. Pokemon's house. This is the sea, as you can see. Some Pokemon are found only in water. And off we go. Here, it's my house. For your efforts keeping up with me, I'll give you my running shoes. They're still warm. <laughs> gotcha, didn't I? Don't worry, these are brand new. We got the running shoes from the guy Gent. He would give us the map card in the original game. Touch the sprint button on the touch screen to sprint. Hold the B button down to sprint. So we can switch the running shoes on or off as needed. So we, qu we can quickly sprint up here and pop into the Pokemon Center where it's a good time to wrap this episode up. Thank you very much for joining me. Until next time, this is Red 2 returning to base.